GM. Well, hello everyone. Uh, we're back with the speed runs, and I'm just going to play two games. We're going to keep it a bit shorter now because the games are getting a bit tougher. Um, we're looking at the 1800 to 2000 range. What typical mistakes we're going to see? What we should be trying to think, and what we shouldn't be trying to think. Um, I'm playing with the black pieces in this first game. And we're going for a, a, a French defence, and my opponent playing the advanced French. Uh, I think at this level you have to study the exchange and the advance the most. In the French you need to play this move, you need to hit the centre, because white's got this very strong formation. So we develop and we keep hitting that pawn. And then on the next move we have to decide what our next strategy is. So again, like any opening, you need to know the plans behind the moves you're playing. What what should you be trying to achieve? Why are you playing these moves? Now there's two ways to play this. You can keep the pressure on that pawn or the move that I tend to prefer is this move here, just putting the bishop on this square. Uh, now this is quite a flexible move. We still may go for this pawn, but another idea that I quite enjoy playing is this one here and we're using a secondary pawn break really to try and open up the center of the board. But that can be a bit dangerous because our king is quite open, our opponent's king is castled. But now we're gonna start opening this up. This is all theoretical, we, we take here. And again, my opponent showing me knows the theory. I'm gonna take that one off. And here, I've gotta do something with my king. So I'm going to facilitate queenside castling. Still theory here. My opponent defends that one, and now I'm gonna castle queenside. And this is a very interesting opening. I don't know if it's entirely sound for black, but that doesn't always matter as long as you get positions you like. Now, I'm not sure about that move. What is that move actually doing? Is my opponent really gonna do this? Well, I can play a6. I need to start creating counterplay. And again, I like trying to develop all my pieces, and because I know the middle game things I'm trying to achieve, I kind of know where these pieces should go. And this knight sits very nicely on f7 in these positions. So I know that my knight should go for this square, but first of all, let's have a look what my opponent's trying to play. I'm gonna stop that one. Well, he might be able to sacrifice the piece here, but do I really believe that? I, I don't think so. He's only got one rook attacking me, and, and I don't believe that one rook attacking me is is, is gonna be scary. This is, this is a very good move. He's trying to now open up my king. Because if I take there, he opens up the C file. And I don't really want to allow that. I want to keep this side closed. So let me just have a think how we're going to do that. Well, if he goes here, I want to play A5. And then he might better sack a pawn with B6. That would be very interesting. But at least it's quite closed then. So I'm going to continue with my plan. Let's move this one backwards. And I want to now start pushing my pawns and target this, this one here. So he has gone here. And now I'm going to keep it as close as I can. And he must play b6 here. b6 is what I think a player around this standard would play. And he has, because he needs to open up a line. Now, do I take that pawn and allow his rook in? Um, I think we do. And the opening, again, my opponent's played very well here. I'm going to drop my queen back, because he's got this square to work on. And he seems to have the first attack. But I notice like, this, this opening is quite dangerous for me. Okay, so did he really need to play that one? He's trying to maybe open up the bishop, but he could have played, I feel, with this square anyway. Okay, anyway, let's have a think now what to do. So um, he's attacking this pawn. Now, if I move forwards, this bishop comes here. My bishop will block, but then his knight comes in. So maybe this is a very clever move. So first of all, do I, does it help play this? I need to keep defending a bit here, not my, not my forte. Uh, by any means so I'd like to keep it closed but this move here knight here does scare me I have to admit because I don't want to take and allow all this pressure here so what about if I go bishop here but then the knight comes in anyway so this is a very dangerous position I have to say my opponent's played this very well actually this move is good and my time's going down bloody hell this is getting dangerous okay I'm going to go here I think I, now I'm scared of the knight coming in. So let's see, let's see if that knight comes in, yep. Yeah. And I feel like I should be taking this one. 
very strong attacking piece but okay I'm surprised by that because now I can go b6 and I can keep some files closed he still he still captures here if he wants to okay he's going for this pawn and again this is another excellent move from my opponent how do I defend this pawn maybe I can't defend this pawn I'm gonna have to move my king and I'm down to a minute everything's gone a bit wrong here my opponent has played much higher than his rating okay he could have maybe taken there but he didn't bother do I defend this pawn okay I'm trying to keep the lines closed where my king is he should certainly be taking here and opening up the lines he has again another great move and I think he's pretty much winning now as long as he finds the right continuation so we have to have a look at this afterwards and see where I went wrong because clearly this game has not gone my way at all. If I, well, I'm still not going to, I'm obviously going to try to keep fighting. Okay, so let's go here and try to create some counterplay on this side of the board. When you've got a bad position anyway, okay, he's just simply taken it. I was hoping that the open H file might help me, but I honestly can't see how it does too much. And the problem is, again, this rook. I'm going to actually allow him to take that one because I, I don't want his queen to come in. I've got 39 seconds. I'm material down. If I'm allowed to play this move, I'm okay. So, of course, he should push his pawn forwards. Another excellent move. He's playing all the good moves. I'm relying on these pawns to give me some play. And another good move. He's just trying to get rid of this good bishop. I'm trying to keep a blockade on his pawn here. So I'm trying to keep it as closed as I can. But now something like this, he continues playing excellent moves. I'm, again, I've got two defensive strategies. I'm trying to keep the position as closed as I can. And he plays this. He's calculated brilliantly. And this is just going to win the game, I think. What great play from my opponent. Okay, we're playing on to the end. But this was, this was a, a, fantastic, a fantastically played game. Well, I might have to just resign. There's, there's no real hope here. Uh, in this position these two pawns are not really going anywhere so this is actually the first loss that I've had so far um, but sometimes you know if your opponent plays excellent chess what can you do what can you actually do uh, we'll have a little look at this game afterwards on the computer see how well my opponent played why is he slowing down now uh, I, I'm very unclear okay I'm gonna resign this one no hope um, and let's just have a look at the computer now when someone plays that well uh, <laughs> it does raise my suspicions unfortunately so let me just get the whole screen grab and s let's see bear with me one second please and let's just see you can try to guess what his accuracy level was there uh, I've got a feeling it might be pretty damn high so let's have a review at the game and it's 90%. What do we think about that? What mistakes did he make? He made one blunder, apparently. Rookie one. Well, I'm not going to say anything. Um, but that was a lot higher. I mean, it happens. I mean, my opponent was always doing okay. Uh, and I just feel the speed he played there. And, and the moves that he played well, they're very, very good. All I'm going to say is that, you know, a grandmasters haven't played. I had this opening against Peter's Fiddler and I didn't get crushed like that in, in such a short time span. So this guy was playing well above his rating there. Well above his rating. So, well, uh, well done. Well done to my opponent. Okay, well, let's see if we can win a game now. I, I, I will play the other French line in future well, well you know it, it, I should review that game but because I'm trying to help you guys uh, you know there wasn't really any mistakes in my opponent's part I mean it was really what did I do wrong and if we if we have a look I mean I, I'm I wonder let's have a look what the computer says about this a4 because a4 um, is quite a rare move in actual fact so let's let's just see here yeah. But it is one of the computer's top choices. That raises my suspicion a bit more. I mean, how many humans would play A4 here? I have to ask myself: Is that a natural move, or is that something that they might know? That you know, that move is very, very strange to me. Okay. Anyway, 
I'll be honest, I, I've got my suspicions about that one, but what can we do? Um, let's play another game and see if we can do somewhat better. We've got black again, and luckily I've got a Dutch this time, <laughs> which I'm much more comfortable in. Now, I like playing these two moves first because uh, my opponent going for a London system now. I find it a more flexible way to stop a lot of gambit lines than white plays. I'm going to bring my knight out, control the central squares, and then my opponent playing the London system. So a lot of you might be intrigued to know, try to know what to do against the London system. Well, the good thing for black against the London is I can at least get my bishop to this diagonal. So I'm going to do that first because in the Dutch, you don't often get your bishop to this diagonal. Now, what I recommend in my chessable course is bishop d6 here. And I feel that this is a good way to equalize, to keep things relatively simple. Yes, I've got double pawns, but those double pawns can be used in the center very nicely. For example, here. And remember, my bishop is a very nice piece here. I'm gonna simply castle. And if this is captured, my knight comes to the center. And here, well, this knight, again, we've got to try to develop our pieces. It's actually pretty much best placed over here. We don't want to leave it on the queen side. Um, and this move is something I'm going to rely on. So I know from, again, working on this opening that these two knights work very well here. This knight can now capture the center. I can go d6 here. I don't see what the problem is. This is, you know, double pawns in the center is often a good positive thing because you control more squares. So I like these double pawns. And now this is maybe my natural next move. Uh, after pawn takes, I have to think what I'm going to play. Am I going to play pawn takes there or, or something else? I mean, we can do other things here, but this is the natural follow up. I'm also thinking that I'd like to play this kind of idea, but I can't play there now because it would lose a pawn. So I need to support this square. I could play, I don't want to put my queen on the same file as the rook, but I could play something very tricky like queen b8. If my opponent castles, is e5 going to be very annoying there? I think it is. Let's have a look at this weird move. So here, my opponent played this without thinking. Mistake. Clearly, he should have been thinking, why did, why did I play this move? And what was I trying to achieve? Because I think now that I get this in, my idea all along is defend this pawn. He's got to be very careful about this square. And I've now gained what I expect is an opening advantage because this is a big threat. And my pawns look very nice. I don't know if my opponent could have stopped that plan, but he didn't even consider it. So remember really to get into the mind of your opponent. Okay, still a position. I mean, my center looks very nice, but that's all it is. This knight is very bad. I'm looking at his pieces. If I go, I want to go for his king. What about something like this? Quite risky. Um, I could try to centralize my queen, but then he takes and he has this square for his knight. Looks okay for him. So I could even try some pawn sack here, 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 but then he has this square for his knight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just push this one, blocking his bishop off. It does block mine off as well. And I really want to centralize now, but after takes, bishop takes. I quite I think this is okay. I don't mind swapping this bishop for this knight. Because this bishop is now blocked by the pawn. So I'm thinking about exchanges I'm happy to play. I don't think his bishop is particularly fantastic here. Now, I'm going to continue by with this move. But as soon as I played that, I, I'm not so sure I'm happy with that one. Okay, now this square should definitely be used by a knight, right? But I want to, okay, if I take, is this check annoying? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just shuffle my king away. Could go for an ending, but let's just shuffle this. I want to try to get this move in next, ideally. Take over the open file. And I'm sort of relying on my little bit extra space with this pawn uh, on, on e4. And I'm also thinking maybe I can play this move. So, okay, so he's, he's going for exchanges. And this makes, again, I think this is a good move. Well, I have to really take that one. And this queen is quite annoying. So this bishop is still bad. Is it now time to try and do something on this area of the board? Okay, it's not really achieving a great deal, but I do have pressure against f2. Let's play Let's play this one. He must capture, I feel, because this pawn's gonna be too dangerous. 
My opponent's playing so well today. They are really playing excellent. The, the level of chess has really shot up around this mark. Now, I was hoping I'd have something here, but do I not have anything here? What about knight here? If he captures, I capture and take the rook. This one seems like a safe move to me because I'm taking on f2. I mean, this is my whole point all along. He's got to be very careful. My threat is to take here. This loses immediately to a back ranker. My opponent's only been let down by this little tactic, and I had to see this in advance. The queen f1 is going to be checkmate, and this one coming in. Pretty good game. Uh, I think my opponent played pretty well uh, around most of that one. We'll do a little little check um, on the review. Oh, no, we can't because I'm not a premium member. Great. <laughs> I, better, I better upgrade this account, and I? I can't, I'm not going to do it today, so I can't be bothered, but we'll do it another time. But um, where did my opponent go wrong there? I mean, uh, generally, um, this all seemed fairly normal. I'm very comfortable here. I'm at least equal. I think this is a nice setup for me. And my opponent loses time here. Maybe I should even be coming in straight away with this knight. Maybe this is the, the way I should play. Queen b8 looked very interesting, though. And my opponent didn't really look at my plan. And this is all very normal. I could probably play it better around here, but I'm just playing it simple. And I'm relying on my pawn structure to at least mean I'm not worse. I don't want to allow this knight here without being able to capture it because it's too strong. And now I'm just trying to swap off his active pieces. So I'm actually playing quite defensively. We're trying to get rid of his active pieces. My threat here, mini positional threat, is maybe to take over the file. So he makes more exchanges. And now I'm at least equal. Probably white is okay, but this move really discombobulated my opponent. You know, when your opponent starts coming at your king, you should slow down. He played the right move. I don't think he can allow this pawn to do anything more. And now he really, I think, had to keep his rook on this pawn. What should he play here? Well, actually, if I was white, I might be thinking of things like queen c1. Because the queen exchange might be okay for him. Because this pawn could be weak. And I don't want to allow anything with e3 at the wrong moment. So I want to cover this square. So my queen looks very nice on e3. I'm just trying to reposition. And I'm trying to stop all my opponent's counterplay. But I think the two mistakes my opponent played here... He didn't really look at queen b8 and see what I'm trying to do. And in this position, he didn't really realize that my whole point is that I'm going for f2. And after this move, he only took like 10 seconds to fall into a checkmate. So he was he was playing some of his own moves very well, but he wasn't considering my moves enough. Remember to do that. That could be one of your key takeaways for today. Remember to consider your opponent's moves really as, as much as you can. Try to work out what they're doing. That's one thing that can help you win games. But two very interesting games. Both played very well. And please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to keep the videos coming when I can.